Today, top energy and tech leaders are coming together for the Future of Batteries Summit 2025, a major push to bring next generation solid state batteries to life right here in the US. The solid state battery story has felt like a long tease, stretching over years of promises and missed deadlines. Each company said a breakthrough was near. Every headline claimed a revolution was coming. Yet most of us are still driving cars powered by regular lithium ion cells. But something feels different now. More factories are opening. More test vehicles are hitting real roads. Some companies are even taking pre-orders. So the big question returns with new weight. Is this finally the moment solid state batteries become real? Or is the hype about to repeat? Let's look at what is true, what is close, and what still isn't. The meaning problem behind solid state. The first barrier to understanding solid state batteries is that the name itself has blurred. For years, solid state sounded simple. It suggested a battery with no liquid inside at all. The version many people imagine is the full, all solid state battery, often called an ASSB. This design uses completely solid electrolytes and promises higher safety and better performance. But the modern industry also includes semi-solid batteries, which keep a small amount of liquid. Some hold less than 10%, others reduce that to 5% and call it a quasi-solid state battery. Companies do not even agree on where these lines truly fall. A few define solid state by performance instead of materials. When Tech Insights opened Yoshino's solid state battery and found liquid inside, it showed how loose the definition has become. The situation is similar to buying ice cream and later seeing the label say frozen dairy dessert. It still tastes good, but it is not what the name suggests. And because there is no global standard, each company decides its own rules. My view is simple. The label matters less than how the battery works. If it charges fast, feels safe and delivers more range, then a few percent of liquid is not worth stressing over. But the confusion has damaged trust, especially after years of shifting promises and slow progress across the industry. Even experts like Dr. James Edmondson warn that true large-scale commercialization is still years out. The credibility gap is real. Understanding this confusion helps set the stage for what is actually happening now and what is still just talk. That makes it easier to judge the real moves and not get lost in the buzzwords. Early products you can actually buy or pre-order. For years, solid state tech existed mostly in press releases. Now, a few real products are finally moving toward customers. One early example comes from SAIC Motor in China. They opened pre-sales for the MG4 model with a semi-solid state battery inside. This version uses around 5% liquid electrolyte and is sold as a safer option. SAIC says it passed harsh penetration tests without smoke, though these results do not appear to be verified by outside labs. The range is listed as 333 miles, with an energy density of 180 WH per kilogram. There is still no clear information on how fast it charges, and only the most expensive MG4 trim includes this battery. But the price is still around $14,000. It is not a full solid state battery, and it has not delivered yet, but it proves something important. The technology is finally touching the consumer market. Mercedes-Benz also reached a major milestone through its partnership with Factorial Energy. Their test EQS sedan using Factorial's solid state battery drove 749 miles on real roads. The company says this battery is from the Solstice ASSB line. These are not lab samples. They are real cars with real tests. But even here, we should be careful. This does not mean mass production is next. It simply proves the idea works outside a controlled environment. It is progress worth noting, but it is not the revolution yet. Still, these early steps mark the first time solid state adjacent technology is moving from theory into everyday machines. That alone makes the next few years much more interesting. Companies standing at the edge of mass production. Some firms are past the concept stage, but not yet at full factory scale. QuantumScape is one of the most talked about names. They partnered with Volkswagen and sent their QSE5 battery into Ducati's electric racing motorcycle. 
This battery hits an energy density of 844 WH per liter and charges from 10 to 80% in about 12 minutes. It can support high power levels on the track. They also use a fast separator heating method called Cobra, which speeds up production. Still, the company's timeline has shifted more than once. They hoped for commercial production in 2024. Now they are sending samples in 2025 and plan field tests in 2026. BMW and Solid Power are working on a sulfide-based ASSB for the BMW i7. Sulfide electrolytes can fit into existing roll-to-roll -roll equipment, which could help reduce costs. Solid Power says this approach may be cheaper by a wide margin, but both companies say more work is needed. Solid Power once said sales might start in 2021, a timeline that clearly did not happen. SK On, a Solid Power partner, is also pushing forward. Their warm isostatic press-free method increases density by applying heat and even pressure to the electrodes. They opened a pilot plant in South Korea and moved their expected release year to 2029. Nissan is also targeting ASSB cars by 2028. They are using dry electrode techniques from Alicap to avoid solvent steps, which could cut costs. But their pilot plant only opened recently. These companies are serious. They have money invested, teams working, and machines running. But none are ready for mass market production yet. They are in the zone between promise and reality, where everything looks close but still fragile. The quiet technical problems no one likes to talk about. Even with strong progress, several major challenges still stand in the way. Temperature sensitivity is one of the biggest. Some solid electrolytes work best only when warm or dry. That is a problem for anyone living in a cold or humid region. Cars might need built-in heaters that add cost and weight. That extra weight hurts range and makes engineering harder. Then there are dendrites. These tiny metal spikes grow during charging and can pierce both liquid and solid electrolytes. Many companies say they have solutions, but none have shown a complete fix. Each cycle can make the dendrites worse, and once they break through, the cell can short internally. The solid electrolyte interface layer adds another issue. This layer forms on electrodes over time and slows the movement of ions. It reduces capacity with use and makes the battery less predictable. Solid materials also struggle to maintain contact with the electrodes. Liquids naturally fill gaps, but solids can crack or pull away as the battery expands and contracts. This increases resistance and harms performance. And finally, even if all these technical hurdles are solved, mass production remains the largest mountain. Solid state batteries need new tools, new standards, and new forms of quality control. The industry knows lithium ion production well. Solid state production is still being invented, tested, and debated. Different companies are choosing different materials and strategies. That diversity is exciting, but it also shows how uncertain the winner might be. These problems do not make solid state impossible. They just explain why progress has been slow and why timelines keep slipping. So what does the future really look like? The wide range of solid state designs makes it nearly impossible to give the technology one single readiness score. Some lab groups are like Huawei and Dick sit around the mid range on NASA's readiness scale. They have working samples, but nothing beyond controlled tests. Automakers with cars on real roads are higher, but still far from full commercial maturity. Pilot plants are promising, yet they remain tests, not proof of success. That is why deadlines like 2028 or 2030 should be viewed more as goals than guarantees. Many targets before them have already slipped. They might slip again. But despite all this, useful progress is happening. The MG4 shows that semi-solid state tech can reach normal buyers at a low price. Mercedes showed that huge driving ranges are possible. Companies building pilot plants demonstrate commitment beyond marketing slides. And honestly, the question, is it really solid state? Matters less than, does it work well and safely? If a battery charges fast, holds strong energy density, and stays safe even when damaged, that is what most people care about. The next few years will test every claim. 
we will see which companies were dreaming and which were building. Solid state batteries may not be the revolution that once seemed ready to land overnight, but steady progress is real. Some parts of the story are still hype, but others show true promise. The road to commercial success is long, messy, and filled with delays, yet more groups than ever are getting close. For now, the best attitude is cautious optimism. If these companies meet even part of their goals, future cars will be safer, lighter, and faster to charge. But what do you think? Will solid state batteries truly arrive this decade, or just inch forward again? Share your thoughts below.